Hi, hello, good morning. It is Monday morning. I'm feeling pretty good about it, which is nice. I feel like I've been sleeping a little better lately. And to be fair, I've been trying to sleep better, story of my life, I guess. Um, but it's actually been working lately, which is really nice. So it's currently Monday. I leave to go to Holland on Saturday in the afternoon, which means that I have five weekdays before my trip to Holland. And I also have five chapters left in between the waves to rewrite. Um, so five chapters that are already in existence and need to be rewritten. So if I can manage to rewrite a chapter every single day this week, so do one per day, then I will be ready to go on my trip to Holland um, with everything in the current draft pretty much edited and redone and then all that will be left is the new chapters or the new scenes that need to be added which again I do have a list of I've kind of been building out that list as I do these edits because new scenes will pop into my head um, so I've been keeping track of those I have those I know what they're gonna be but I want to get to the point where by the time I'm going to Holland on the weekend I I already have finished the rest of the work basically and I just need to add the new chapters. If I manage to get that done I'll only have a few scenes left and it will probably be the climax and or ending and tying things off because that is where I'm still a little bit murky I guess and I'm not quite sure how things are gonna like pan out. When I finish adding these scenes and editing, when I so when I finish the draft 3 edit basically, I'm gonna do one read through and I'm actually gonna find alpha readers. And I feel like I'm not gonna call them beta readers yet because it still feels too early. Technically maybe they are, I don't know. I feel like it's just semantics, but I'm gonna find, um, I don't know, probably three to five alpha readers to read through this version of the draft or read through draft three. I'm trying to think of how long I gave alpha readers last time. Somewhere between two to four weeks. I don't remember. I'd have to look into it, but I'll find the alpha readers for draft three. And then while they're reading that and I'm waiting for feedback, my plan is to do a way more detailed, in-depth outline of book two. That is something that I'm still lacking, that I still really need. Um, which is also why I'm calling these readers alpha readers because I am aware of the fact that like this draft is still going to be missing quite a few things that are building up for book two um, because I haven't done a detailed outline to the extent that I want of book two yet. So that's the plan. I have about 35 minutes before I have a work meeting. It's a pretty busy day but I feel like I'm gonna try and do like 10 minute sprints here and there and just get as much done as I possibly can during those 10 minute sprints here and there um, which I actually think will be more than enough time to get done at least a rewritten chapter. So that's the plan for today. We're feeling good if not slightly stressed. <laughs> bit of writing done or editing mostly rereading honestly done earlier today I think I've really underestimated how stressed I would be about going to Holland this weekend it's also been a busy week like we had to do a house clean this week which takes a long time because it's there's just a lot of stuff to go through and then it was one of the housemates uh, birthdays yesterday so a couple things throughout the day 
um, were happening. So I've just been distracted and slightly stressed and work has also picked up quite a bit. So that has been a focus this week. It's good, I needed work to pick up, but because of that, I feel like the writing has kind of been pushed to a back burner. That and the fact that it's, like I said, more difficult editing right now. Before it was quite easy, I guess, because I had already edited so much of it that it just wasn't that big of a deal. But now it's a much bigger deal because I'm rewriting and basically drafting brand new chapters. That's okay. I also got most of my work done this morning and now I've just gotten ready a little bit, gotten dressed. Um, I'm gonna run out and do a couple errands even though it's raining and I don't really want to go out there right now, but I'm going to do it. And hopefully, yeah, kind of like getting ready, doing some errands, getting out of the house. And hopefully that will make me feel a little bit better and a little bit refreshed so that I can be a bit more productive on the editing this afternoon. But before I continue, I wanted to mention the partner of this video, which is Ana Luisa. Um, I've partnered with them before. They create jewelry. I'm wearing um, pretty much all their pieces right now, but I got a couple new ones as well, which is exciting. I told myself I was going to branch out a little bit, which for me, someone who likes to wear like big funky earrings, branching out is actually getting like silver, which I know is like, crazy. I feel like I'm very comfortable wearing gold jewelry. I feel like that's what I preferred and that's what I really liked, but I kind of wanted to like mix up the jewelry a little bit, mix some silver and gold. So I ended up getting these like silver um, dagger and the other earring that's the matching pair of this one actually, even though it's different, is these little like droplets. I have the gold pair of this as well and I love it. So I was like, this feels like a safe bet if I wanna start like mix matching metals. I feel like I can get one that I already know I love the gold one. And then I also got this cool like kind of droplet pendant necklace. And I thought it looked nice with this one, which at first I wasn't sure about this one. I'm more someone who prefers like chain necklaces, I guess. But again, I was trying to branch out. I was trying to expand and explore pieces that I wouldn't normally get. If you don't know much about Ana Luisa, um, they are a sustainable jewelry brand that also has reasonably priced jewelry considering the quality. So like everything that I got is gold plated. I believe it's all gold plated and or silver and I it has all stayed in great shape. I've had pieces from them for probably getting up to over three years now, I think. They're definitely my everyday pieces that I wear in the ocean and when I shower and when I work out and basically all the times that I shouldn't be wearing them. Um, and I've said it before, but they've all held up and I have enjoyed wearing them for the past few years. And they are a sustainable company and they have quite a bit of transparency on their website. Um, and they outline a lot of the different ways that they work towards a better environment and just work towards having more ethical practices and less waste as a company. So I will leave them linked down below if you're interested in checking them out. And they did partner with me on this video so that I could share some more pieces with all of you. And now I'm gonna go outside and it's gonna be great. So I picked up some plants. I picked up a bunch of like edible flowers and seedlings that need to get planted um, while I'm gonna be away. So I just wanted to make sure that I had all of that ready to go for the roommates before I actually leave for a month. And then it was unsuccessful picking up a journal, unfortunately. I checked like the dollar store, I checked the bookstore last week and I just like haven't found anything that I really like. Um, which is a little worrying because we're getting very close to the end of the journal that I'm currently writing and I feel like it's time to start a new one, but I just have not been able to find one yet and I feel like it's too late to order online. So I don't know, maybe I'll like end up getting one in Holland when I get there. There's, there's always a possibility of that. <laughs> so yeah, that was not successful, but what was successful is that I actually found a new podcast to listen to. It's called The Shit No One Tells You About Writing. I believe that the hosts are actually from 
a literary agency, if I'm not mistaken. I've only watched like one and a half episodes, um, so I actually don't know the podcast very well, but so far it's been so helpful because at the beginning of the episode, they put like, um, basically the agents, I'm assuming they're literary agents, they read through a query letter that was submitted from someone in the audience who is an author, all different genres of, of books, and they basically read through the query letter live, like on the podcast, so that you can hear exactly what someone has written for a query letter, and then they kind of pick it apart and talk about like what they enjoyed, what they didn't really like, what they would have liked to see more of, what parts felt a little too long, what parts made them curious about the story, and I feel like that's just so useful to hear like such an in-depth detailed breakdown of query letters like that especially from people that again I'm assuming are like in the industry and know what they're talking about and then they also do a little bit uh of a breakdown of the first chapter they don't read the entire first chapter but they do talk about what was done well in the first chapter and what could have been improved and what they liked and whatnot which I think is just incredible because even if you're going to self-publish a book, that first chapter is really pretty make or break, you know? Like the first chapter is what either sucks in the readers or makes them kind of bored with the book and not really want to continue. So I feel like that's really valuable information to get to hear on a podcast. So yeah, the shit no one tells you about writing if you're curious. Anyways, I'm, it's like 7 p.m. I'm wonder, I'm so grateful that it's still light outside, but I'm also feeling very low energy because of the rain. So I'm gonna probably watch a YouTube video and then I'm gonna decide what to do next. And it's either gonna be keep working on this chapter that feels like it's really not going anywhere. I might just skip this chapter and do a later one, honestly, because this one is not going well. Um, so I'm either going to do that or I'm going to cut my hair because I kind of feel like doing that. I don't know. It's almost summer. My hair is pretty long right now. I also have very thick hair, so it's very heavy and like warm. So I don't know. The possibilities are endless on a rainy Thursday night. <laughs> okay, well, I would just like to say... <laughs> that Kayla from the beginning of the week, like Monday Kayla at the beginning of this vlog, she had so much life and hope and <laughs> so much excitement for the week to come and she felt like she was going to be very productive and she felt like she was going to edit five chapters of this book and by edit I mean fully like rewrite five chapters of this book and also potentially more. She even had a stretch goal but I cut that out of the video, so. <laughs> and um, Friday Kayla is more centered in reality. I feel like I have a habit of doing this though, where I, I'm on a roll and I think that I can get a whole bunch of stuff done with the same momentum because I have been like having good momentum. Um, and I even said it in previous vlogs and I've been telling myself like, you know, once you get to the end of this book, like once you get to, end of act two, beginning of act three, you know it's gonna slow down like crazy. Like you know that you're gonna have to rewrite pretty much everything. You're gonna have to draft a bunch of new stuff. Don't worry if you're not editing as quickly as you were from the beginning. And I even told myself all of those things and yet I still went into this week thinking <laughs> that I was gonna be able to um, get through all of the editing. Obviously I did not. I, I barely got through that first chapter, like, and even so I'm not super happy with it. Like I'm probably just gonna rewrite it again because it was just such, like such a push to get through it. And I feel like I also really didn't take into account the fact that there was a birthday this week and house clean, like spring clean, which takes a lot of time and also just like work picked up quite a bit. I don't know, the stress before like going on a flight somewhere, even though I'm just going to my dad's and I know it's very chill and I pretty much just have to get there and I'll be totally fine. Like, it's not like I'm going on some crazy adventure where I need to make sure I have like camping gear or special stuff, but still there's like this weird limbo when it's the week before a flight and you know you're gonna be leaving soon. I don't know, I'm also obviously a pretty big procrastinator, so <laughs> I don't, <laughs> get things done until I absolutely have to. So, I mean, the past two days has pretty much just been working and cleaning and packing and getting things ready. And I have someone subletting my room while I'm gone. So I have to get a whole bunch of stuff ready for that still. So life just gets in the way sometimes. It's totally okay. I am still feeling good. I, I was gonna say at first I was feeling a little disheartened because I've just tried to edit this 
book throughout the entire week and I was starting to get frustrated because it just wasn't going anywhere um, and then today I was thinking about the fact that there was a lot going on this week and I'm about to go to Holland where I will also have so much time to edit because I'm I mean I'm kind of on vacation I'm still working but he lives in the countryside and it's very peaceful and quiet and I just feel like my focus and my relaxation will be a lot better. So I'm trying to remind myself that it's okay that this one week I didn't get as much done as I wanted when previous weeks have been super productive. I'm still getting through the book and I have to find a way again to do this sustainably. Like I can't force myself to burn out with every book that I try to write or I'm never going to be able to, you know, write in a sustainable way and release books in a sustainable way. So I feel like these are kind of just lessons that you gotta learn at some point. And I feel like these are lessons that I just have to keep learning. And I don't know, each time I reflect on this and think about what like being a sustainable creative means, I think I get a little bit better at it. So that is a win. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I feel like it was all over the place and just like a lot of trying to get stuff done and not quite getting there. So yeah, um, thank you again to Ana Luisa for partnering on this video and for the wonderful jewelry. Again, pretty much my everyday pieces. If you see something that I'm wearing um, that's like a good classic everyday piece, it's probably from Ana Luisa. So you can check them out in the description box down below if you would like. Thank you all so much for watching this video and just being with me on this journey. Don't forget to smile and I will see you in the next one. Bye.